Hello, good afternoon. Mm. How is everybody today? For those of you who have never called the live before, my name is Jewel. I am a grateful recovering addict of eight years. Every day I go live with my brother-in-law, Joe, who is a recovering alcoholic who just celebrated 18 months at the end of December. Hey, Julie. How are you? How are you? Let's see, Joe. Hey, Renee. How are you? I keep forgetting your wife tells me that the light can't be behind me. There we go. You ever do a live video with her? It's annoying as shit. I did do one with her um, last week, matter of fact, for my review. So, yeah, I did. She wasn't that bad. She didn't bother me. <laughs> So, today, we're going to read from the gist for today. Do you have anything to say before I do the reading, Joe? Not at all. I think you might like this one. Well, let's hear it. Okay. Recovery. Narcotics Anonymous offers addicts a program of recovery that is more than just a life without drugs. Not only is this the way of life, not only is this way of life better than the hell we lived, it is better than any life that we have ever known. Basic text, page 107. Few of us have any interest in recovering what we had before we started using. Many of us suffered severely from physical, sexual, and mental abuse. Getting high and staying high seemed like the only possible way to cope with such abuse. Others suffered in less noticeable but equally painful ways before addiction took hold. We lacked direction and purpose. We were spiritually empty. We felt isolated, unable to emphasize with others. We had none of the things that give life its sense and value. We took drugs in a vain attempt to fill the emptiness inside ourselves. Most of us wouldn't want to recover what we used to have. Ultimately, the recovery we find in NA is something different, a chance at a new life. We've been given tools to clear the wreckage from our lives. We've been given support and cur in cure, I can't say it, courageously. It's not how you say it. We've been given support in courageously setting forth on a new path. And we've been given the gift of conscious contact with a power greater than ourselves providing us with the inner strength and direction we so sorely lacked in the past. Recovering, yes, in every way. We're recovering a whole new life, better, thing, better than anything we ever dreamed possible. We are grateful. Just for today, I've recovered something I never had, something I never imagined possible, the life of a recovering addict. Thank you, higher power, in more than words can say. So... other than my slip up of words. I like this one because I say this all the time. I say that even if I had never done drugs, I wouldn't live the same life I live today. I wouldn't be as grateful. I wouldn't be as empathetic. I wouldn't be as compassionate. I wouldn't be, I just wouldn't be the same person, so. All right. And if you think that you're going to go back to the person you were before, you're crazy, for one, because that doesn't happen. And I wouldn't want to be that person. I really wouldn't. So. You get a lot of humility from it all. Because mm -hmm. I know, like, before... You know, before I started, you know, before alcohol, like, you know, took control of my life, um, you know, I was pretty cocky and arrogant. Mm -hmm. um, stayed to myself, but, you know, I was kind of an asshole, um, which, you know, I became more of that when I drank. Right. Um, 
And then on the other side of it, I'm not like that anymore. Um, I wouldn't say that I wasn't down to earth, but I was just real, um, you know, sure of myself. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, because at a young age, um, you know, I just had, I had a lot of shit going for me. You know, I had a lot of stuff going my way. Right. Um, for myself personally, despite, you know, where I live, despite, you know, where I grew up, despite um, some of the shit that was going on mm -hmm. um, around me. And above all that, you know, I had, I made a pretty good way for myself. Right. And um, so I was kind of, you know, I was kind of cocky. But, I mean, I think it comes a lot with, you know, teenage boys, Yeah. you know, that are in that you know, girl chasing phase, you know, they start making some money, they start buying some cars and clothes and, right. you know, it just kind of comes with territory for a lot of us. Um, but through, you know, drinking. Girls, girls are the same way. Uh, yeah. And through, you know, through drinking, I, you know, I became, um, you know, I lost a lot of that shit. Um, I lost a lot of respect. I lost a lot of, you know, people that I hung with, some for the better, some for the worse. Mm -hmm. um, I lost a lot of cars. You know, I lost a lot of money. I lost a lot of my time and my freedom. Um, I missed out on a lot of opportunities. Um, and, you know, as I, you know, when you drink, you kind of, you start to settle as you drink and use drugs, you start to settle and then you start looking for excuses. So you start um, using those same things that helped you you know, overcome and strive for better, you start using those same things that happened to you or that you went through as a crutch. Mm -hmm. And you start saying, well, this is why I drink or this is why I do drugs. You know, this is why I'm the way I am. Mm -hmm. If you went through this shit, you'd be like this too. And, but it wasn't, it wasn't a problem before, you know what I mean? Right. Um, and it makes, it makes you look at yourself in the mirror and face yourself and realize, you know, I got no one to blame but myself. Yeah. Um, you know, despite all the shit, I had a path that I could have, I could have chosen and I chose a different one mm. and I paid for it. And, you know, ultimately when you're the cause of your downfall, um, it breaks you and it, it makes you humble and makes you appreciate things more. It makes you, um, be more understanding of other people's circumstances. Yeah. Um, you know, because I used to look at, you know, when I was young and I, you know, I was going through my drinking party phase, you know, we looked at, fiends like you know you're a joke right you know what i'm saying yeah we looked at them like they were less than and you know they were you know like they weren't people you know we i you know and as you grow up around them it's like they're they're sometimes they're fun to be around you know because mm -hmm. you know they're funny they tell jokes tell stories whatever and they can be fun to be around but you don't you never look at yourself in the same light as them. You know what I mean? You never think that's me until it starts to become you. And then all of a sudden you're the joke. You know, you're the one that's getting shit face drunk every time there's a function or a hangout. And you're the one that ultimately ends up making an ass out of yourself. And you find that you find yourself on the same level, you know, while everybody else is maintaining, right. you know, you're looking at the fiend that comes around or the crackhead that comes around or the drunk, the old head drunk that comes around. And you're like, fuck man, I'm starting to, you know, I'm starting to be just like that. You know, you start to you start to see yourself in that person. Yeah. And um, you know, eventually once you get it together and you get clean and you get sober, you become so grateful that, you know, I'm not gonna be that fifty year old or that, you know, sixty year old or yeah. you know, forty year old that just never got it together. Um, and is still, you know, the clown of the party, you know, it's like I'm not, you know, you you just you're so humble and grateful that you made it out of that before it got too bad or before you couldn't change or before you lost everything. Right. You know, luckily for me, um, you know, my wife stayed down with me, even though I put her through a lot of shit, you know, she stayed down with me and I always had somebody that could keep shit together. Mm -hmm. If I was you know, falling apart, she could always kind of hold it together. Um, and you know, it's just, it made me, it made me grateful for, you know, the people in my life, you know, that didn't bail on me or didn't judge me. Um, 
you know, I have some close friends that I'm still pretty tight with, um, you know, that didn't judge me either way. You know, if I was going to drink and be a clown, they would laugh at me or laugh at me. Right. Um, and if I wanted to quit, they would support me, right. you know, so, and they stayed down with me and they're still, you know, they're still with me today. So, you know, I just, I'm grateful and it, it made me humble because, you know, no matter how high up on the ladder you get, that shit can change overnight. Yeah. And you don't have to be an addict or an alcoholic to have a life changing experience where, you know, you lose everything you have. But for me, that was the case. You know, that was what was the direct cause. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it, it cost me my education. Like I said, it cost me a lot of cars, clothes, money, whatever. Right. Um, and for people who think, you know, alcohol isn't as bad, like I used to think, um, you're making a big mistake because while alcohol is socially acceptable, I think it's hard I feel like that's why though because of that. Right. It's hard for people so, to understand that they have a problem because so many people do it and so many people are functional and so many people can do it, you know, once a week and be done, you know. Well now but now, you know, it's almost like we're seeing a reemergence of the seventies because now it's like now it's becoming a big problem for everything because now drugs in general are becoming socially acceptable. Mm -hmm. You know, now, you know, the, the industry, you know, they put out that it's all right to be, you know, they tell these young kids and these people who listen to hip hop and shit like that, they tell them like, Oh, it's okay to, to pop pills and you know what I mean? Right. And, and be addicted to opiates and narcotics like that. It's cool now. You know what I mean? And in my era, you know, when I was growing up, nobody thought that shit was cool. Right. So now it's becoming a big problem because now it's becoming almost on the same level as alcohol, except it's illegal. Right. You know, so which if you can go to the doctor and get a script and that script's in your name, it's not illegal. Right. So, I mean, it's becoming an issue. I mean, I feel like that's why um, it's becoming such a epidemic so to speak i mean drugs have always been around they're always going to be a problem right but the reason why it's becoming an epidemic and the reason why nobody nobody wants to say the truth nobody wants to admit it but the reason why it's becoming such a problem is because pills are starting to be looked at on the same playing field as alcohol mm -hmm. you know pills are starting to look at on the same playing field as marijuana you know so it's starting to become okay and then the the music industry backs it up yeah. So then that tells you it's cool. So it's okay and it's cool. Right. And then like I told you, and like, you know, we've all told you, eventually that pill habit gets to the point where you can't afford it. Yeah. Um, and you're gonna make the transition at some point in time. If you if you do it long enough and you do it excessively, yeah. you will make that transition yeah. from pills to dope. Cause it's a no brainer. Yeah. So you know, I just, I just wish, you know, these, you know, as parents, you know, we got to tell these, these young kids coming up, you know, we got to tell them like, man, that, that shit ain't the way to go. Right. The, um, and, the Caroline goes purple and the topic goes purple, the coalitions that do all those things. A lot of the things they're working on now <coughs> is trying to get education into the youth, you know, into the high school. They're not even worried about high school because they've been working on high school for so long now. But now they're working on putting programs in place as early as elementary and middle schools because we already have, um, a few weeks ago I did a video when we couldn't go together. I had done a video about the event coming up and I went through some statistics and it's like one out of six high school students has already tried heroin. And that to me was mind blowing because I remember being in high school thinking that people that did drugs were like, like something was really wrong with them, you know, like something was wrong with their home life or something was wrong, like with their DNA or, you know, I, cause I didn't know, I didn't know anything about addiction then. I, I mean, I really wish that, you know, parents, you know, will ride their kids around the neighborhoods and show them the homeless people and, and mm -hmm. let them know, like, that's, that's where you'll end up. You know, that's, that's going to be you. Yeah. And you know, try to explain to them, you know, that 
and I'm going to point out something too. You know, a lot of these, you got to be careful because, and a lot of these kids don't understand it. For one, these artists have money that will that we don't have. They have a different kind of money. Yeah, they do. So they can afford, they can afford to live comfy, cozy, and keep up with their pill habit or whatever the case may be. That's for one, for, the rest of for us. two, <laughs> for for two, there's a big percentage of them who don't even use drugs, like they say they do in their songs. They're just they're just putting the agenda out there. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because it's become something good to talk about because everybody thinks it's cool. And I don't know when that started. You know what I mean? It's like it went from the era of, you know, hip hop artists who rap about selling drugs to now they all they rap about is using drugs and selling drugs at the same time. Well, anybody with a brain can tell you that uh, that affects your profit margin and that don't really add up. Right. So if that's what you're doing, you know, if that's what they're if that's the image that they're portraying, and you got to keep in mind they're portraying an image. You know what I mean? So just be careful and tread lightly when, when you know, you think that's the thing to do. Um, and that's why it's almost to the point where I don't even think alcohol is harder to deal with than um, pills and heroin or nothing like that just because of the industry, how they put it out there. Yeah. And, you know, there was a point in time where, um, you know, country was the was the biggest side of the music business in this in this uh in the United States, but it's been hip hop for a long time. Right. So you can think what you, but it's been hip hop for a long time because what eventually happened is they blended the genres. Mm -hmm. So it can be easy to listen to for anybody, for any walk of life. They just mix pop, hip hop, rock, whatever, mix it all up. So now it's just, you got one big genre. So everybody's listening to the shit. Right. Um, and I'm not on here, you know, trying to bash the music or whatever. Cause I grew up, as a child, I mean, as a child, child, listening to, you know, Eminem and Ghetto Boys. So it's not to say, like, just because you listen to a certain type of music that that's going to be who you are. Right. But it plays a big role, especially when you got the kids in high school backing it up. Yeah, because they don't know any better. Right. So I'm, I'm to the point where I almost think, you know, alcohol and pills and dope are on the same playing field as far as, you know, being hard to avoid and hard to look at for what it is. Mm -hmm. I just think that for, I think when it comes to alcoholics that because it's legal for one and because so many people for so many years, I mean, every party people drink at, you know, the Christmas party, the holiday, the Halloween party, the um, Easter, they're having mimosas, you know, um, Everything involves, so many things involve liquor and alcohol now. So that's why I think it's harder for um, an alcoholic to recover, you know, because for instance, when I walk into the gas station to get cigarettes or to buy gas, I'm not triggered by the beer or the liquor. You know, it's not something that starts to turn in my head. Whereas if I walk past the dope man on the street corner, that would be a trigger for me, you know, and, and, but I don't have to walk into that every time I go into the store. And a lot of days now, I mean, the store right up the street sells beer. So, I mean, that's anywhere, but that's just, you know, how I feel. So. Well, it's like I said to everybody um, in the past, once you make a decision and, and you're committed to what you're doing, that kind of shit won't bother you. Mm -hmm. And the less you obsess over it, the easier it becomes. That's why I talk about, you know, stop slapping labels on yourself. Like you can't help it or you have a disease or, you know what I'm saying? It's you, you, you got from your parents. Cause okay. You know, my, all my parents, I ran down my family tree. Right. The majority of my family did drugs and drank and had problems with it since they were kids. I started drinking at an early age um, and I didn't have a problem for, you know, four or five years. It, it, it was progressive. It's a progressive disease, mm -hmm. if that's what you want to call it. I just call it, I, you know, I started to drink excessively. And the more I drank, the more I got addicted to it. You know, the more I liked it, um, the more I used it for my fun, the more I used it to get away from life, the more I used it to, for everything. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? So it's more of a hobby and a habit than it is anything else. Right. And you can break a habit just like any other habit. Um, people go on diets all the time, you know, and if you don't think that the food is addictive, then 
you know, you need to do some research. Yeah. You know, people change lives in many different ways. People quit smoking cigarettes all the time. Mm -hmm. People, you know, break away from caffeine all the time. So it's just as simple as it's a habit and it's a terrible habit that, you know, you created because you used excessively. Yeah. You know, so I try to think about it like that because if I look at it like a habit, then I know I can change my habits. Mm -hmm. You understand? If I look at it like a disease or like I got it from my parents, it's in my DNA, then I feel like I'm cursed and I'm stuck with right. it. Right. So however you want to look at it is up to you, but I just choose to look at it like it's as simple as a bad habit. Mm -hmm. So I change it by, you know, finding another habit to indulge in that's better for me. Or I, I try to, you know, just avoid, you know, touchy situations. Um but as far as like walking in the store and seeing the whole rack of beer, it's like that shit don't bother me. Yeah. You know what I mean? That shit don't phase me. It's I mean, it is what it is. It's it's always gonna be there. Yeah. And if something as small as that is like the be all end all for you, then you're either young and you're either new and fragile in your recovery yeah. or you really haven't recovered and you need to you need to think about things you can do to to strengthen yourself and you know to cope with it a little bit better. Mm -hmm. You know, as addicts and alcoholics, our coping skills, um, mm -hmm. they get kind of buried. Yeah. Right. So, you know, it's just, it's a lot comes with it. But for me, um, I feel like the biggest problem is people just don't make that, that definite decision. Yeah. You know, it's yeah. like, they're always avoiding it for a reason instead of like, I just don't want to do this anymore. I don't want this in my life anymore. I don't want it to be a part of my life anymore. They're usually doing it for like a, a certain reason. Oh, my, you know, I, I lost my kids. Um, my wife walked out on me. My husband bailed on me. Um, I got arrested for the 20th time and I got to do seven years. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's all excuses. Yeah, you can't, you can't quit for stuff like that you got to quit for something that you know that that's for you you got to quit for you and you know on the flip side like I said before you know I used my daughter to get sober and it worked and it still works and it's working every day um but I had to make up my mind myself I couldn't just be like you know my daughter is the be all end all for me mm -hmm. I made my mind you know what I'm saying? I made the choice. And the reason why I made the choice that I made is because, you know, at 28, 29 years old, it's like, if I'm going to have any type of life, this can't be a part of it. Right. If I'm going to have a real life, instead of just being some, you know, piece of trash that sits in my front yard and drinks beer all day or, you know, does nothing with my life that's productive, just waste my time, then this can't be a part of it. And that's the decision you got to make. You got to you got to make that choice that I just don't want this to be a part of my life anymore because it blocks my shine. It stops me from doing things that I need to do. It stops me from having a good life. Yeah. Thank you. Very nice. So. So we always get on when we're, when we're like halfway through or almost finished. Can I just say that I'm upset that you're not finding out what the baby is? Thank you, Rachel and Leslie and Katie. Well, Andrea said she had one week clean today. Congratulations. So, well, I'm going to recap just for today now that we have more viewers. Narcotics Anonymous offers addicts a program of recovery. This is more than just a life without drugs. Not only is this way of life better than the hell we lived, it is better than any life that we have ever known. Basic text, page 107. Few of us have any interest in recovering what we had before we started using. Many of us suffered severely from physical, sexual, and emotional abuse. Getting high and staying high seems like the only possible way to cope with such abuse. Others suffered in less noticeable but equally painful ways before addiction took hold. 
We lacked purpose and direction. We were spiritually empty. We felt isolated, unable to empathize with others. We had none of the things that give life its sense and value. We took drugs in a vain attempt to fill the emptiness inside ourselves. Most of us wouldn't want to recover what we used to have. Ultimately, the recovery we find in NA is something different, a chance at a new life. We've been given tools to clear the wreckage from our lives. We've been given support in courageously setting forth a new path. And we've been given the gift of conscious contact with a higher power greater than ourselves, providing us with the inner strength and direction we so, we so sorely lacked in the past. Recovering? Yes, in every way. We're recovering a whole new life, better than anything we ever dreamed possible. We are grateful. Just for today, I've recovered something I never had, something I never imagined possible, the life of a recovering addict. Thank you, higher power, in more words than I can say. Congratulations, Morgan. Uh, Misty, we go live just about every day, um, generally between the hours of 10 and 4. <laughs> Not usually early and not usually later than that. So we don't really have a set time. Um, but feel free to send us a friend request and then you can um, click the option to get notified when we go live. Yeah, that's probably your best bet because we're never, you know, we try to go between like 12 and 30, but, you know, it is what it is. Yeah. I will have nine years in August. I'm almost coming up on a decade, getting to be an old lady, I guess. So, does anybody have anything they need to talk about? Oh, Misty, you mean for like um, local meetings? Um, if you send me a message, I can find you um, a website that should have times and, and meetings in your area. So. Yeah, service work is good, Nate, because um, it, it helps me because, you know, I feel like when you give back and you become a standard, or, you know, you, you start to preach, so to speak, mm -hmm. um, you know, you have, you hold yourself to a new, a new standard and now you're accountable. Yeah. When you're just being sober and clean, you know, on your own personal time and your own personal life and you're not, you're not messing with nobody or talking to nobody. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's just different when you become accountable. Now it's like, you know, you can't, you get into that line where it's like, you know, I can't be a hypocrite. I can't come on here and tell people what to do or, you know, tell people what I think they should do or give people advice um, if I'm not living what I'm saying. Right. So you put a little bit more on your plate, which is great for a lot of people. Some people it's too much pressure and it, it fucks them up. But um, for a lot of people, it works and it works for me. Yeah. Um, I just celebrated 18 months sober not that long ago. Um, and this is like, this helps me because when I, I know I have to do this every day. Yeah. So I don't, between this and my daily life, I don't really have time to even think about the shit. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I'm to the point now where I don't miss the shit. You know, it's like in the beginning, it's, it's really hard in the beginning because, you know, those memories and that buzz or that high is fresh into your mind. So in the beginning, it's hard as shit. But when you when you the more time you start to get, the easier it gets, because, you know, eventually it's like you realize how much you like your life without it. Mm -hmm. And you realize, that you know, I don't need this shit. You know, the whole time I just been wasting my fucking life and wasting my time on a feeling that is never going to be as good as just life on life's terms, just feeling life for what it is. Yeah. Um. You know, you don't miss out on things. You don't miss out on, you know, the function that you were at, but you were so fucked up that you weren't really there. You know what I mean? Yeah. You don't miss out on time with your family. You don't miss out on, you know, time with your friends. And 
you just got to keep in mind, you know, it's like, think about all the, like, extra shit that comes along with it. Think about all the drama. Mm-hmm. All the jail time, all the sick, all the times you're sick, you know, and it's true for alcohol, too. It's not just for dope and pills, you know. Right. I woke up sick plenty of times. I've woke, I've woken up so many times where I've, you know, thrown up stomach acid to the point where I couldn't eat for two days because my mouth was just on fire. Mm. So, I mean, it's like, because when I drank, I didn't eat, you know, because I wanted to drink more. Yeah. So it's like, you just got to keep in mind, like, why the, why would you, why do you miss that shit? Like, there's nothing good about that. Mm. There's nothing good that comes out of it. And I started to realize over time that, I'm going through all this bullshit for a two hour buzz. Right. It's not worth it. Cause I mean, how long does your higher buzz really last that you're coherent for? Right. I am. Um, it's just uh, one of my, to me, it's not worth one it. One of my biggest things is I don't ever want to have to go through detox again, ever. I don't ever want to have to repeat that withdrawal phase because that was what I needed to help me. I think that was a big piece of my recovery, experiencing the pain that came from detox and withdrawal. It was tough. I just keep that shit fresh in my mind. Yeah. And when, when you're I'm rewatching to others, it stays fresh, you know? Right. I'm rewatching The Wire for the first time since I watched it in live time when I was in school. And um, I watched the show from the time it premiered all the way through. And this is my first time rewatching it since like middle school into high school. <laughs> and as I'm watching it, anybody that watched The Wire, they know it's about Baltimore. It's about, you know, Maryland. And it's it's got a lot of fiends in the movie. It's got a lot of dope fiends and, and drug addicts in the movie. And just watching the way they fucking live, man, and like, looking at their skin and looking at their eyes and, you know, looking at their day-to-day -day life and how they never do anything but chase. Right. That's all they do. They never move up. They never move down. They never go anywhere. They never do anything. They just chase, chase, chase. You see them guys, you know, in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s. And we don't have to watch a TV show to see it because it's in our communities. Right. There's plenty of people like that in our communities mm -hmm. who have done drugs from Middle school all the way until old age. Mm -hmm. And they've never gone anywhere. They've never done anything mm -hmm. except it's like they're living the same day on repeat. Yeah. Who the hell wants to live their life living that same exact day on repeat? The chase, yeah. What kind of life is that? It's not, It's exhausting. I mean, I can remember literally like being just so tired of just running nonstop, constantly running, having to figure out where the money was going to come from, where were the drugs going to come from? You know, it was a lot of chase for me because we had to uh, Groundhog Day. Um, because, you know, I didn't do, you know, I was an alcoholic, so going to the liquor store wasn't going to do anything for me other than set me off. You know, I wanted drugs. I wanted real drugs. That's what I was going to do. And so I spent so much of my time searching for the money and the means and the drugs themselves. Yeah, like Brock said, the lies and having to cover your actions and tracks was exhausting. And that's true, too, because I told a lot of lies. I mean, I had to, to get out of the house or to go this or to get the money or whatever the case was. Lies and, and constantly covering up tracks. Yeah, and, you know, for drinking, as far as that goes, you know, it's like, I, like I told you on the, in the beginning, I maintained for a long time because, you know, it was new to me, so I, I approached it with caution. Mm -hmm. But then I started comfortable with the amount, and I just started drinking more and more and more and more. And then all of a sudden, I'm not in control anymore, and I'm a wreck, and I'm just drinking, you know, to the point of, blacking out every time I drink. Unless I run out 
or the store closes, I'm drinking till I, till I pass out or black out. And when you black out, you know, you're, you're, you're out there moving around doing shit and you don't even know what the fuck you're doing. Yeah. I, I didn't personally know I, I drank and, um, she, Jewel was, um, a pill addict and a heroin addict. Yeah. Not to say that I wouldn't drink, but it wasn't my, uh, I wasn't a cup of tea person. It wasn't my thing to do. And for me, I've done pills, you know, when I was younger, I did them for a little phase. But it wasn't, um, but it wasn't your cup of tea. <laughs> it, it wasn't, yeah, it wasn't real to me. Like I would, I would you know, pop a pill with my beer here and there when I was really young, right? Like in the, in the, in the, I don't know, within like the first couple years, I was probably 18 when I started doing that and that lasted didn't uh, that didn't last at all. I just, it's not my thing. Um, I don't like being immobile. And a lot of times it would, it would, if I took too much and I didn't know what I was doing, you know what I mean? So a lot of times if, you know, it just, I didn't understand, you know, I didn't know what it was going to do and I didn't trust it with the alcohol. I knew exactly what was going to happen every time I drank. Mm -hmm. So the alcohol was consistent for me. So I just stuck with that. And the men on my in my family that was always their thing it was socially acceptable all my friends were drinking yeah um i had a lot of older friends and they were you know they always drank so that's what i stuck with and like i said before um you know my my crowd the older people that i hung out with they didn't condone that shit they didn't condone you know taking pills and doing drugs so i followed suit right and see for me nobody ever talked about any of it you know, nobody talked about drinking or drugs or what would happen if you started doing drugs or anything like that. It was always a, a hush hush subject in our house. So I didn't know. I mean, not that that was an excuse to not do better. I just didn't know. So. But like I told you before, alcohol will take you to the same place. It just takes longer. And it doesn't take longer for everybody, you know. Are you reading the comments or do you want me to read them out loud, Joe? I would say for Paul, yeah, I read them and then I just respond instead of reading them. I would say for Paul, um, try to go through like a temp agency because a lot of times they're pretty loose on how they hire people. And when you're with a temp agency, they pretty much just definitely get you the job. And you go in and take a mouth swab and your your ass is going right to work. And if you perform well within a time period, they'll give you a full, a permanent job. Yeah. So try that. Yeah, because my husband has a record. There's program. He has a record and he was a, he's been a heavy equipment operator. And they never even blinked at his resume. Yeah, there's programs that'll get you a job. Yeah. <laughs> Mm. Trina, I agree. And they're usually go ahead. To be honest with you, the jobs that they get you are usually a hell of a lot better than trying to get some fast food job and they're being all uptight because you got a background. <laughs> so I would say, you know, go through one of them programs because usually the jobs they find you pay very well. Yeah. And a lot of times they'll have the option where um like I know with some of the temp guys that used to work with Josh, when their contract with the temp agency part was over, a lot of times his boss offered them a job. So they would go from making whatever their rate was to the temp agency to getting a raise because now they were cutting the middle person out. Mm. Well, that about wraps it up for me, Joe. Matthew's going to get off this bus. All right, I'm cool with it. I'm hungry. I'm tired. I got done. I just got done working out, so I need to eat. Yeah. So tomorrow I have a call at 11:30. So you'll have to let me know what time. Melody, I'll send you a message. I don't know if it's somebody personal in your life, but I'll send you a message. 
I don't know if goodwill helps or not. Um, I know that in our area, a lot of, um, not a lot, but in our area, we have a few recovery houses and I've known quite a few women um, that have been in the recovery houses that have gotten jobs through goodwill. So I don't know if they have some sort of program that helps or not. Hell yeah, them Eagles came through, boy. <laughs> Every time they doubt us, we show up. I don't know why people talk shit about the Eagles anyway. We've been – we make – we got, like, four, we're fourth most or tied for third with wins. And actually now we're probably – we might be above the Steelers because we I think we was tied with either the Steelers or the Colts. So we're, like, third place in wins since, like, 2000. So I don't know why people talk shit about the Eagles. They just mad because their team sucks. Well, let's hope this year if they go to the Super Bowl, they don't burn the fucking city down when they're done. I don't know why. They're doing. Hey, man, they're excited. They got that monkey off their back. They finally won a Super Bowl. <laughs> I mean, and I don't know why a lot of a lot of teams, a lot of fans, you got them Cowboy fans, they still bragging about championships from 1995 when their ass is still in I'm like in Tyler clothes. Embarrassed from our uh from our lose to them on Saturday. Not how I expected things to go, but I hate when we don't play at home. We're nothing when we play elsewhere. <laughs> Them Cowboys fans trip me out, man. Especially if they're my age. If you're my age, you don't remember no damn championship from 1995. Come on, man. <laughs> so, Michelle, send me a message. Let me know what you need help with. Um, I have to hop off here now because my oldest is getting ready to come home. I know. He keeps talking. And earlier he was talking about you. So, all right, guys. Thanks for listening. Have a great day. We'll see you tomorrow. All right, y'all.